Welcome to Kid Missing TV. Welcome to Kid Missing TV. This is a special. We're only going to be delving into one case today, but before we do that, we have a couple of updates for you. First, a case that we were going to bring you um, that I've been following for a very long time. And we didn't get to bring it to you because it came to a resolution, very surprisingly. It's the reason I do what I do. Over 20 years later, 22 years later, this young man who had died in a car accident um, and was unidentified was identified. He was called Grateful Doe and Jason Doe because he had a note addressed to a Jason. Um, his mother, for whatever reason, hadn't reported him missing. He'd been following the Grateful Doe, thus the name Grateful Doe. Uh, the Grateful Dead, I'm sorry. Thus the name Grateful Doe. And um, finally, one of his friends saw a picture, an another new sketch that was done, or computer-generated image that was done, and said, that's Jason. That's Jason Callahan, I'm telling you. And so his mother finally gave her DNA, and lo and behold, Jason Doe, a.k.a. Grateful Doe, was 19-year-old Jason Callahan. He was finally given his name back. And, and this is something that just illustrates why I do what I do. Um, we knew for a long time it was him. We knew by the images, and a lot of things matched, a whole bunch of us. And to see it come to fruition and to see him get his name back, that is why I do what I do. The remains of Cedrica Preventure, who went missing on July 31st, 2007, who we profiled here on our Missing in Canada show, have been located um, according to the Sorete du Quebec. Um, that is the police department in French. And again, excuse my French. I am not my grandmother. I do not speak French. Um, human bones identified as hers were found in the woods on the edge of Highway 40 in St. Maurice near Troy Rivera's where she was from and where she was taken from. No arrests have been made in the case. Um, they still don't know who killed her. And her father said, and I quote, despite the pain and heartbreak, I want to thank from the bottom of my heart on behalf of all of Cedrigas family, all the people, police, media, oops, and numerous volunteers from near and far who have helped in search for, and this is in French, Ma Petite Pousset. You showed great generosity and solidarity throughout the horror that we have lived in. Well, you are very welcome, Mr. Proventure. If you have any information about the murder of Cedrica Proventure, please call 1-800-659-4264. This very special episode is Mystery in New Hampshire. I'm sure you've all seen on the news the case of the woman and the three little girls that were found in barrels in 1985 and the year 2000 and who were found by DNA to be related to one another except for the one child who they believe is probably related to the other children just not maternally. Um, all they had was mitochondrial DNA which is DNA that is pa passed down virtually unchanged from mother to child. They didn't have nuclear DNA which is your whole DNA. Um, they were found near in Bear Brook State Park, near a, in Allenstown, Merrimack County, New Hampshire. It was near a, um, well, they call it a caravan park in Australia, like a mobile home park. Um, they don't, they are trying to get together all the people who lived there during those two periods of time 
Well, actually, more during the 1984 period of time, because I think they were all put there at the same time, um, to interview them, to find out if they saw, heard anything. Um, they also want to know if there are any suspects amongst them. Um, the woman is estimated to have been between the ages of 23 and 32, although they've narrowed that a little bit. I think she was around 30 years old, um, maybe slightly younger. The oldest child is estimated to be between the ages of 9 and 10 years old. The third child is estimated to be between the ages of two and three years old, and the fourth child is estimated to be between the ages of three and four years old. Um, again, they were found in barrels. It's, it's horrible. Before I go into the case in any more detail, I'd like to take a moment to show you a video um, that was graciously permitted to us to be used by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children that shows you pictures of the places and things that we'll discuss. Please take a look at their video. Tiny Allenstown, New Hampshire is charming with breathtaking scenery. And with just 4,000 residents, locals love their quiet lifestyle. Allenstown is also home to a horrifying mystery. 30 years ago, in 1985, hunters made a chilling discovery not far from Bear Brook State Park. The bones of a woman and a little girl. No one knew the identities of the woman and the child, where they were from, and how they might be related. Investigators believe someone killed them and used a barrel to hide them in these woods. For 15 years, no answers. And then the case took on a shocking new twist. A state trooper looking for clues at the original crime scene discovered another barrel. Inside, another two bodies, two little girls. Investigators believe these victims were part of the original crime and had been in the woods all along. Now they were dealing with not two unidentified murder victims, but four. And with three child victims, it's a top priority at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Schweitzer, the National Carol Schweitzer works unidentified cases at the National Center. We've actually never seen four unidentified bodies found together that remain unidentified after all of these years. And it's my job to support law enforcement and provide them the resources that they need to be able to identify who these children are. With NICMIC's help, new science finally sets the investigation on a new path to answers. Where we're at now is closer to identifying them than we ever have been. New DNA testing shows the woman is closely related to two of the girls, but the relationship to the third child is unknown. Further scientific testing shows the woman and two of the children grew up in the same area, perhaps in the New Hampshire region. The middle-aged child grew up separately, somewhere further north. Along with these new findings, cops also have these new images created by a forensic artist at the National Center. The woman is believed to be 22 to 33 years old when she was killed. The child found with her was approximately 10 years old. And the youngest girl, also related to them, was between two and three years old, with a large gap between her two front teeth. The unrelated child was three to four years old. Also very key to the investigation, we now know that all four victims lived together in the New Hampshire area for a few weeks to several months before they were killed. It's very difficult to try and match up in my mind and, and I think in many people's minds how, the, how this could happen. How could an entire family 
uh, disappear and it take over 30 years to come to an answer as to who they are. We are not giving up hope. We know that the friends and the family of these unidentified children are still alive. It's time to give these murder victims their names back. If you know anything about this woman or any of the children, please call 1-800-THE-LOST. Um, there is a website if you'd like to read more, read more articles and more detail about this case. It is the oakhillresearch.blogspot.com. Again, it's oakhillresearch.blogspot.com. Um, and please note on the posters that you're seeing, the beautiful group composite sketch, you know, of, of them as a group was done by artist Carl Kuppelman. Um, <clears throat> each of them were tested with something called isotope testing. Isotopes are found teeth, bones, hair, and they can help determine where you've lived by what you've eaten. There are certain types of isotopes and certain amounts of these isotopes in different places. Now today it would be a little more difficult because we're such a mobile society, we could have eaten anywhere. Um, but where you grew up, it can probably tell that. Uh, in their case, you will see on this map where they think they're from. They're pretty sure that all but the youngest child, the two to three year old, are from New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, somewhere along the East Coast. Um, and the youngest girl could be from as far away as Montana. Or she could also be from the East Coast, according to the isotopes that they found in her bones. Last year, members of the New Hampshire State Police, the FBI, and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children met. And that's when they reviewed the data of the isotope analysis and released it publicly just recently. Um, based on the poor dental care they believe that the four may not have been visible members of society for a while before they were killed. Um, so maybe they were abused, kept hidden. All those things are possible. Uh, unfortunately, they were in the barrel so long that there really isn't anything for clothing or those types of clues. <clears throat> they believe that the four were killed at the same time, sometime between 1980 and 1984, which is a year before the first um, barrel was found. Um, at the press conference, they talked about, again, the isotope analysis and the fact that they could have been from New Hampshire or another New England state. Um, the, the little child, who had no biological relation, supposedly. They're not 100% sure on that. It could be a paternal relation. She spent part of her childhood farther inland, possibly Nebraska, Minnesota, or the Dakotas. They're not sure. Um, again, she could have been from Maine or New Hampshire. If you look at the map, you get a better idea. This is really complicated, deep stuff that I don't completely understand. Um, but again, they believe she is connected somehow, possibly paternally, to the other little girls. Um, what is known is they were all together in New Hampshire for two weeks to three months or so before they died. Um, the Bear Brook Gardens is the trailer park where um, 
it was just a few hundred yards down the road from where they were found. Again, they're looking for people who lived there. If you lived there, even if you think you don't know anything, during that time period, it's very important that you come forward. Um, also, evidence indicates the victims were white, but investigators do not know their skin tone or eye color for sure. Uh, the bodies were not in the best condition because they were exposed to the elements for years. Um, <clears throat> they were all born in the United States. This is what we know in basic terms. They were all born in the United States. All four victims were living together in the New Hampshire area for about a month before their murder. All four were killed at the same time and were put in the park somewhere between 1980 and 1984. The adult was most likely in her mid-twenties when killed, but could have been as old as 33. She was the, most likely the mother of the other two children, of the oldest child and the youngest child. I actually misspoke earlier when I said it was the youngest child that was unrelated. It was actually the three to four year old, not the two to three year old. So I apologize for that. Um, there's a lot of <laughs> details here. The middle child, believed to be, as I said, three to four, was not maternally linked, but they cannot tell whether she was paternally linked because they don't have um, nuclear DNA. <clears throat> the adult and two related children are believed to be from New Hampshire or a nearby state and definitely the Atlantic coast. The two related children grew up together and were raised by the woman. Um, it is possible that the perpetrator may be a related person, um, but the remains do not provide a complete nuclear DNA profile. So authorities have not been able to run it against DNA profiles of sex offenders or anything like that. The mother and the oldest child were beaten, but they did not disclose how the other two children were killed. I guess they're holding that back. Um, <clears throat> there are news stories on this case from the U.S. clear over to the U.K. and clear across the international dateline to Australia. How great is that? I wish more cases got this level of press. You know, when I started researching this case and realized that this case had, had gone all the way to Australia, I just thought that was that was the neatest thing. You know. Um, Again, if you look at the pictures, I know the map is tough to understand, but the pictures are really easy to understand. There's four people without names, four victims without justice. That's pretty easy to understand, and that's what it comes down to. Um, if you have any information in this case, please call either the National, Missing, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST or the New Hampshire State Police Department at 603-223-3856. Once again, I would like to thank the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children for the wonderful video they've so graciously allowed us to use during this broadcast. Okay. Um, next time, we'll be back to our regular programming. Um, it'll be episode 16. We're going to go to the swinging 70s. <laughs> Um, we have several interesting cases to talk about, including one young lady that I had the privilege of talking to her sister. I actually talk to her now on a regular basis. And you'll hear from her sister from my radio show. You'll also hear about our special feature case, the murder of Deanna Kremen, who was from right here in Massachusetts. She was from Somerville. And the Blast from the Past case will be the murder of the Grimes sisters, which is connected in a around the circle way, a little more than roundabout, um, to the Peterson Schuessler case. So I hope you'll join us for that. Thank you for joining us on our Kid Missing TV special. 
please join us next time for our regular episode. Um, thank you for continuing to join us. I so appreciate that more than you know. Um, may God bless you and keep you warm this frigid weekend and have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Good evening and God bless.